Today, I want to talk about AI-generated art, but um, I'm going to be late for work, so we're going to have to make this quick and we'll talk on the way. What are you doing? We got to go. Okay, bye, kitten. Oh, you're such a good girl. Let's go. Oh man, I'm already late. This is where I work. This is the roaster, uh, the one I talked to you about that caught fire. Uh, that's the afterburner, this thing right here. It, uh, it burns up the particles. Where the uh, so basically the the green coffee, all of this stuff that you see here, goes in that little hopper right there. That load, the loader goes up to that hopper. It's roasted. And it comes out here, and then we uh, grind it, and chip it out. So AI art is exactly what it sounds like. Basically use an artificially intelligent script to generate images for you. The way it works is that you put in a couple of keywords based on what you're trying to convey from the image. Uh, sometimes you'll add a couple of parameters like the aspect ratio or how you want the image to be portrayed. And then you hit enter or send and it creates the image for you in seconds usually in under a minute or two and the craziest part about this is that the images are actually pretty cool looking now the big thing that kind of brought ai art to light in you know the last couple months was the article about the guy that won an art competition in the colorado state fair submitting and using a mid-journey piece of artwork now, Midjourney is one of the softwares, but he actually disclosed it when he submitted that piece of artwork. It was put in there, and the competition was for digital art, and so the judges allowed it. Now, they didn't really know what Midjourney was until after the competition and after they had already given him first place, but they even said in the article that knowing that it was created by AI, they still would have awarded him first place because... It was digital and he disclosed that it was made using Midjourney. But of course, the other artists in the competition and many artists the worldwide were understandably very upset. You know, when you can use a program to generate an image for you in mere seconds, and then you can take that image and blow it up and make it into something that's sellable, it's very easy to see why regular artists who go the traditional route of actually making pieces would be upset. So around the time that that article was coming out regarding the guy using Midjourney to create the art for the Colorado State Fair, I actually had discovered Midjourney for myself. And I saw a lot of people talking about it and some of the images they were posting on Instagram and thought I'd give it a try. And I have to say that Midjourney is awesome. Now there are other AI generation softwares out there. There's Dali, um, and there are some other ones that I don't remember the name of because they don't really use them. But Midjourney is the one I really like. And the way that it works is you put a prompt into Discord, the chat app that a lot of streamers or gamers use, and it spits out an image. It actually spits out four images. And then you can take any one of those images and upscale them to a higher resolution.
Now, what I find fascinating about this is it generates these images in seconds. I mean, you put in the prompt and in less than a minute or two, you have four unique images based on that prompt. And if you don't like those images, you simply click a button and it generates four more. Or if you do like one, you can upscale that into a higher resolution and take that image and use it for something else. Or you can even make variations of that. And if you really like something that someone else has generated, you can even copy the tags that they used and put those back into the journey to get your own results. Now, I get it. This is kind of cutting edge technology and a lot of people don't really know if it's legitimate or not. Now with a lot of technologies when they come out, that's usually the case. And I'm not here to argue whether it is or is not legit because the technology is here whether I like it or not. In fact, in that article, the artist that submitted his art using the journey actually talked about this. He actually said that you know, it, whether we like this kind of art or not, it's here to stay. It's going to be here in the long term. But now it begs the question, is there a place for unique art? Is there a demand for unique creations in an AI-driven world? Well, my answer, or my theory, is that the answer is yes, but it's going to be diminished. Because with AI, you can simply test more concepts faster. You can create tons and tons of images to see what people like or what they don't like. And then you can kind of put those into practice just a lot faster. Now, I think that people who still valued unique creations will still value unique creations and people who didn't will probably value them even less. So for instance, if I had an original painting and then made 20 limited edition prints, inherently that original is going to be worth way more than those prints. But the people who wanted the original will you know, pay good money for it because it's one of one. They are getting something that no one else has. Compared to these limited edition prints, you know, they might still be valuable, but people just want one to say that they have one. And my point out of this is that AI art is the same way. You know, people who can create something from scratch based on someone's, you know, wants and desires or parameters, or, you know, they can make something that AI just cannot generate those people are going to still make some decent money, I think, from being able to make something from scratch. And the people who really didn't want to pay for that anyway are going to be the kind of people who gravitated towards AI because it's a lot cheaper. And if you really don't need something that is specific and you just kind of need something that is kind of a concept of something, well, AI is kind of the solution to that. For instance, there's this artist that I follow on Instagram. I talked about him in my last video and He's a phenomenal artist. Well, AI, if I put his name into AI, it can't replicate his art because he's not well known enough. And this is one of the limitations of AI, is that while AI is great and it, it could come up with some stunning images, it's all based on something else. So if there's not enough data for that, uh, for it to pull from, it's not gonna be able to generate a decent image for you. And this is actually in favor of people who create unique art because we can, as humans, we can create something off the cuff. We can make something, you know, just, just that we are inspired by in some way. But AI can't. It can only make things based on other things. So I think there's still going to be a place for unique art. But let me share with you how I found it and got into it. Now, before a month ago, I had never used AI image generation software. However, I did use AI scripts to generate text. Now, in my last video, I talked about how I wrote a couple of books of poetry and prose. And in my third book, The Last Light of Extinction, I talk about using an AI script to write a poem. Now, the results of this experiment were actually pretty sad. Uh, out of about 30 prompts, only one of them was an actual poem. It did turn out pretty good, but it took some heavy editing and fine tuning to get that text to create something that was, that was readable and that you could call a poem. So it took me some, some effort on my part. So even though the AI generated about 70% of the text itself, I still had to go in and 
you know, edit lines, add lines, change lines, make the words rhyme. And so what I've found is that AI is very good at just generating a lot of things in a short amount of time. However, it's not to the point, at least for AI text generation, to the point where we could probably just use it and, you know, set it on autopilot and walk away. Even though it generates a somewhat legible result, you still have to go in and, and make those edits or fine tune that process to get it to, to give you results that are readable. A lot of the things that it generated for me were either they made no sense or they weren't relevant to the prompt that I had given the software to generate the text for, or it really just repeated kind of the same thing over and over and over. So it would make a line of text and then it would repeat it, just kind of reword it in a different way, and then it would do it again. And so I don't think that AI text is quite there yet. I think that you can use it to create a lot of content and then you can kind of go in and, and edit that content. So it can create, you know, at least a baseline or a structure that you can kind of work off of. However, after using AI generation software for images, after using Mid Journey, that's a completely different story. After using Mid Journey, I have to say, it's actually pretty cool. And I can see why a lot of people are upset about AI kind of coming in and being able to generate these images in seconds without having to do a lot of work. But again, it doesn't really matter what we think about this. It is going to change things in the art world. In fact, I think it is going to displace a lot of people who created unique works. If you think about it, AI generation is really just another form of technology. It's just another tool for us to use. Now, will it displace some previous jobs? Probably, because AI can create things that would have taken us, you know, day hours or days to create. It creates it in seconds. I think about it with the same kind of mentality that I have about the way that phone books were displaced by things like Google Maps and Yelp, or how, you know, brick and mortar businesses were kind of displaced by like Amazon. This is just another shift in technology. Now, I don't think that it's going to completely get rid of uh, positions where people make unique creative items, but I do think that Midjourney does have a place in the future. In fact, I've been using it and I think that it's actually pretty darn cool. And I want to share in my next video some ways that you can use AI art in you know promoting or creating a business but here are my final thoughts about ai art ultimately i think that ai art is here to stay now it's too soon for us to really know the implications of things like AI in the use of art. And we don't know the reaches of what this is going to kind of do to the art world or to artists in general. But ultimately, I think that even if Mid Journey were to get shut down tomorrow, some other iteration of it would be, you know, would be created or dozens more if not so until we know really what the implications of ai art is i think it's going to be here and i think even after all of this and and the dust settles it's probably still going to be here i think that ai art is great for commercial purposes i think that it's great for for creating concepts and for getting ideas done quickly i think that you can there's a lot of base uses you could use with AI art and I don't think it will completely replace unique creations but I do think that it is going to make it a little more difficult to justify spending you know 10 20 hours on a project when this thing can create something similar in two minutes uh, ultimately it's really up for you to decide and I'd love to know what your thoughts about AI art and, and what its role is in the art world going forward. 
I'd also like to just kind of hear what you think about AI art in general, and if you've used it, what your experience has been. Now, in the next video, I'd actually like to share with you five ways you can use AI art to promote or create a business. And again, if you don't like AI art, you, you disagree with it, that's fine. I mean, that's totally understandable. I, I can understand that. But if you believe in it and you think that it is kind of the future and, uh, and you want to get in on the ground floor and start using it, uh, I want to give you some ways to do that. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I know it's a little bit of a, a different video. And if you enjoyed this kind of different format, let me know. Um, I, I kind of have some ideas of some other videos, but they may not be art related. I see that there's a little, it's a little gnat flying around. It's keeping me company um, as everybody else has left work. And it's about time for me to leave too. So I will see you guys in another video. Thank you for watching. Take care. God bless. Bye.